Hello all, Micromunch here and welcome back to the FM19 Southampton save. Today we have our first fixture against Manchester City, reigning champions, uh, champions elect again, superb team. It's going to be really difficult, but a lot has changed since our first episode, which is more of a glossy run through of the new game and the setup. Signings have been made, tactics have been developed, and I'm kind of getting used to the training, but still not really. Transfers first, it's the most important bit, isn't it? Let's face it, it's what we're all here for. We'll start with the outs, the most notable one is Manolo Gabbiadini. He has gone, I said in the first episode, I'm not a massive fan of him. A uh, decent player, but a bit hit and miss for my liking, and not really what I was looking for. Uh, he's gone to Celtic for £15 million, which has helped boost the budget and bring in extra players. The same can be said for the goal machine, Shane Long. Uh, yeah, 20 goals and 122 appearances for Southampton. Kind of says all you need to know. A great workhorse, and obviously a nice bloke by all accounts. You can tell he seems like a good lad, but... Not really what we were after. He went to Newcastle for £10 million. Hopefully they can get some more goals out of him than we did. And the only other one that has gone for any money is my Yoshida. He has gone to West Brom for £8 million. So a step down to the championship. Was a leader in the dressing room. Was obviously vice-captain. Uh, a bit of a difficult one. But again, only getting older at 29. Uh, he is in his prime, but his prime still isn't really the kind of quality that we're looking for. I need to invest more in the youth uh, and build up the team with players that I think are going to have a little bit more and play the sort of style that I would like. So now, obviously, it's on to the ins. And that is always the most exciting part. I feel like we've done quite well. There haven't been many signings, but the signings we have made, I think, are going to make a big difference. And it only seems right to actually come to Yoshida's replacement. Ibrahim uh, Kanate got him in from RB Leipzig. Uh, very, very decent looking 19-year-old French uh, centre-back. Physically pretty brilliant to be fair. 16 strength, 17 jumping reach. He's a tall lad as well. 192 centimetres. I need to change that into feet because I don't know what that is. But I think it's around about 6 foot 4, 6 foot 5. Uh, acceleration is pretty good for a big man as well. Mentally, not quite there, but 16 bravery makes me think he'll be alright. Concentration of 4, 13, and composure 14 isn't too bad. Heading 11, that will get improved. Marking 14, again, will be improved. Tackling 14, again, will be improved. He's basically the same as Yoshida, but 10 years younger, and with a very high ceiling, as you can tell by the potential ability of nearly 4 stars. Very, very exciting. Second to last transfer that we made, because we did only make three, is Kieran Tierney. Uh, Ryan Bertrand will be our captain, but I do feel that this allows me to now move Ryan into a centre-back position. Uh, Kieran Tierney will be our main left-back. He is four-star ability and can only get better at 21. Already a natural leader as well with 16 and 19, uh, 16 leadership, 19 determination. Very well-rounded. Didn't do it as part of a swap deal. Uh, with Gabby Dini. If I'd known that Celtic were after him, I probably would have done shaved a little bit off the price of £21 million. But I'm very, very happy that we have got him. He's no Andy Robertson, though. And last but not least, I've wanted to sign this guy on a football manager save for so long. Casper Dolberg has arrived. £22 million I spent for him and a 40% uh, percentage of profit from next sale margin of Ajax. Fortunately, I don't think I can't see us selling him again. Uh, yeah, at this stage, he's just a very decent, decent footballer. Hopefully, this is the guy who's going to get 15 to 20 goals a season. He has a good uh, scoring rate, 22 goals and 52 appearances at Ajax. is nearly a goal every two games. Uh, the quality down there obviously isn't as good, but then he's a lot younger. He is only 20 years old, so he is only going to get better. 11 pros, zero cons. What more do you want? Mentally tough and quite resilient. I'm, I'm delighted to have him here, and... Annoyingly, he's injured, so you won't see him today. So there you go. There is the outlay. £53 million spent. £33.5 million brought in, which means we have spent 19 point... Well, we we got a net spend of £19.5 million. For what we've got and what we've sold, I think it's a vast improvement. But let me know what you think in the comment section. I was going to go for Andrea Bellotti, but Chelsea got there first, and he also didn't want to talk to me because I'm not in the Champions League. Hopefully, that will be fixed, but not anytime soon. In terms of the Premier League, we've already had one uh, game played, and it was a bit of a surprise result. West Ham winning away at Arsenal. I think Lucas Perez got a 97th minute winner. Uh, very, very exciting. I love the new layout as well this year. It just looks so much better. I will eventually, obviously, download all the logos and face maps and uh, face packs and everything from Sort It Out AS uh, SI. Uh, which is obviously where you normally get them from, but we shall see. See, have actually lost their first game by the looks of things. Who yeah, they lose to? Oh, they lost to Chelsea. Must have been in the um, Community Shield. Very interesting. So as you can tell, this is our 5-2-1-2 formation. Um, the one that we kind of briefly touched on in the last game. Uh, it's going to be very vertical tick attacker. So our second formation seems to be a kind of 4-3-3 variation of Sarri ball, but we're going to call it Munch ball, which I'm not really sure if 
Yeah, no, okay, that sounds a bit odd. But it, it the idea is essentially that we play tiki taka, but we move it so quickly and we get the ball wide, and the fullbacks will underlap and make extra room for the guys to whip those balls in. Uh, <laughs> oi, oi. And hopefully, we can just get Dolberg on the end to finish off those chances. At the moment, though, we're going to go with the 5 2 1 2. We go a little bit more defensive. Uh, we're positive in everything that we're doing. I don't want to sit back and defend. I don't care if it is City. We're going to play the same way against every team. Very similar to where the Bournemouth do, I suppose. Uh, which probably isn't the best comparison to make when you're doing a Southampton save. Either way, our lineup for today is Angus Gunn in goal. Vestergaard, Bertrand and Hoot make up our back three. Uh, Matt Target is going to play on the left because Kieran Tierney is not quite fit yet. Uh, I will bring him on at some stage during the game. Uh, Cedric is on at right back. Or right wing back if you like. Uh, the midfield two of Romeo and Lamina I think is very strong. And Stephen Davis is in behind the front two of uh, Charlie Austin and Danny Ings. Danny Ings is the pressing forward. Charlie Austin is our out and out centre forward. So we've got our lineup. I've got my tea. We are all ready to go. How do City line up? They've got Edison in goal. Hector, he is new. Uh, Stones, company, Carl Walker. Fernandinho, Ilkay Gundogan, Tian. Da David Silva, so no De Bruyne. Uh, Sterling, Bernardo Silva, and Aguero up front. It ain't bad, is it? I love this. This is this is excellent. Look at this. I'm in the change room. I'm going to passionately say, we're underdogs here, and that suits us down to the ground. Let's go out and cause an upset. Didn't really get the kind of reaction I wanted, so it's time to do the old, you got to have faith talk. I think that's pretty much as good as it's going to get. I also like the way they set out the new press conferences. So I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to have a little chat in the tunnel. No Kevin, and he is a quality player. Look at this, the 3D match engine seems a lot better. And I'm actually going to start this series playing in 3D. If things do not go well, we will up there. We'll go back to the old 2D like we used to. But I quite like the look of this at the moment. It feels more like a proper football game. I mean that in the nicest possible way. We're going to speed up the highlights slightly, not extended. We're going to go to key. Cameras on director. Yeah, there we go. Right, away we go. Well, the first 15 minutes have gone alright. We haven't had any shots, but we're matching City for possession. They've only had one, two shots. We've had one, so at the moment, very even Stevens. I tell the boys to get creative. City's beginning to dominate the ball a bit more, but not quite. As long as we can match City, because I think games like this I'm not expecting to win. But it's the games against the mid-table teams that we've got coming up, like Leicester and Huddersfield. They're the games that I really need the boys to kind of step up and play well in. And we're inspired by the feedback at the moment. So our boy, we're probably getting there just because we're a little bit more motivated than C. So we're managing to hold in there. But they're beginning to turn the screw a bit, as you can see. Turning the shots off away. I don't feel like this is a very good game to kind of um, establish just how good we are. This is not really how I intended to start the series with a drab nil-nil. But considering it's against Man City, I will take it. Well, a drab first half, especially if you're a Southampton fan, it wasn't great. And I love how it's now changed the colour back. Uh, we haven't really got into their half, as you can tell here. Struggling for possession in their half. Uh, Carl Walker seems to be having a pretty poor game, so maybe we can get at him. Wesley Who, 100% tackle ratio one. Outstanding, young man. I want to see a highlight like in this. This is the thing. Is I actually want to see the highlight uh, in the 3D format. We just haven't had one yet, which makes it very difficult. I'm wondering what I can do to kind of up the ante here a little bit. Um, I'll tell you what we're going to do, actually. We'll pause, I think, a little slight change. I'm going to take off Stephen Davis. I'm going to bring on Hoiberg, and we're going to put Hoiberg back in. We're going to bump up that mid that midfield a little bit more. We'll see how it goes, but I think maybe bringing Hoiberg on, he's also a bit more physical than Stephen Davis. He might give us a little bit of... Oh, here we go. Our first highlight of the series is Davidson whips it in. Uh, Carl Walker, who I said, was having a terrible game. Has literally just popped one in at the near post, and that's not great. Aguero finds him with a header. Ah, problems. Lovely ball in from David Silva. Aguero completely free. Our blokes move off. The how's that not offside? I don't know how that's not offside. I'm not going to lie. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to my other formation. And we're going to make it attacking. And we're going to take off Charlie Austin. On comes Nathan Redmond. Uh... Lamina and Hoiberg can switch over. Romeo is going to come off and we're going to bring on El Nuisi as well. There you go, we like that. So a slight change in it. It's now a 5 for one but with wide players instead. So we've got Redmond and El Nuisi. Hopefully we can cause City a few more problems if we play in this style. I just think the fact that we just haven't really created anything is the worry move. But then City, like I say, it's hard to gauge how good you are against City. Bertrand here on a free kick. Whips it in. Vestergaard! Oh, God! I thought that was it. 
I saw it light up in my head. Edison rolls out to Vincent Company to John Stones. Hoiberg, great tackle. El Nuisi, play that ball through, son. Oh, poor Hoiberg to Lamina. Lamina, Redmond is in. Oh, he skied it. Oh, oh, no. Oh, I can't believe he's missed that. That was so much better. Mario Lamina, brilliant play. Bernardo Silva takes in the corner. Aguero's got three again. And we've, for all of City's good play, we've been done by two set pieces. As Ilkay Gundogan hammers it in. Oh, this is so disappointing. Bernardo Silva. How has Aguero got in there ahead of Vestigar? That's such poor defending. And how we've not managed to block the shot from Gundogan is beyond me. It's 2-0. And it's not unfair, but it's so irritating that Redmond missed that chance a minute ago because I feel like that was a really big moment. Ten minutes to go. It's not looking like we're going to turn it around. But like I said, I kind of expected us to lose against City. I just don't make it 3-0. Hector to Silva, to Fernandinho, to Delph. Delph, don't, don't let him shoot. Bernardo Silva turns away, finds Carl Walker on the overlap. He whips it in and Aguero nips in at the near post. 3-0. Ah, how I've missed this. How I've missed this. I'm not going to watch that again. We saw all of it in all its glory there. They are so good. They are so good. Time ticks away. It's been unlucky and I can't help but think if Nathan Redmond had finished that chance how different this game could have been. Lamina finds Vestergaard. He plays it back out wide to target. Are oh, we going to make a little chance before the end here? Redmond plays it back. And that is the end of it. City, after a poor first half, came out of the blocks in the second. and It's not really surprising. So I can't fault you for the performances, lads. It's just one of those things. Well, I'll attend the press conference. Why not? Um, not the start you must have had in mind. Just how disappointed are you with today's result? Uh, it's still early days. It's too soon to comment. Carl Walker was the best player on the pitch today. Will I agree with that? Well, considering I said he was the worst player at half-time, um, I'll say I don't want to comment on individual performances. Because obviously when I do that, it all goes to pop. Um... <laughs> Right, so, not the start we had in mind, but it is City. Like I said, it's one-off. I think they are a cut above the rest of the league, to be fair. Let's come back for the September fixtures, then. Let's come back for games against Brighton and away at Everton. That sounds quite good. Uh, then we'll have played around about five games in the league, uh, and we should probably know what, how we're getting on and if I'm really effing this up or not. But thank you so much for watching the episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the transfers in the comment section. And until I see you again for another episode of the Southampton Save, stay cool.